The JL Audio W7 lineup of subwoofers has a unique design feature called the Overroll Surround. This style of design allows the W7 to achieve incredible levels of excursion while also allowing for a maximized cone area. Tons of cone area and excursion combined means more subwoofer bass, but the question quickly becomes, how do we access the mounting hardware on this subwoofer? I'm Mark from the YouTube channel Car Audio Fabrication here today on behalf of JL Audio to show you the correct process for removing and installing the W7. When you first remove the W7 from its shipping carton, it's going to be attached to an MDF baffle. As a quick side note, you want to make sure that you keep this baffle along with all the other packing materials just in case you ever do need to send the subwoofer back in for service. To remove the W7, we only need two different tools. We first need a flathead screwdriver and we need an electric screwdriver with a number two Phillips head bit. This silver piece here that goes around the W7 is called the clamp ring. To remove the clamp ring, we're gonna use the tip of our flathead screwdriver and push it down between the clamp ring and the foam surround and gently twist the screwdriver to pop the clamp ring off of the O-ring and frame. This should require very little effort and if you are encountering a lot of resistance, it's likely because the screwdriver is too far deep in and you're getting behind that metal O-ring. You wanna make sure that you're raised above that metal O-ring so that you're only popping off the clamp ring. Now that we've started to remove the clamp ring, we can simply take our thumb and push in the direction of the speaker circumference, and then we can kind of put our thumb in that gap here, and we can run it around the outside of the subwoofer until we completely separate the clamp ring. Make sure that you don't try to pull up on the clamp ring until it is completely separated. We've now exposed a metal O-ring, and we wanna simply get our fingertips underneath the edge of this and it should pop right off. Now that that metal O-ring is out of the way, the surround is completely free from the rest of the speaker frame. No glue is used to hold this in position. In order to expose each of the mounting screws, we can pull up on the surround and carefully fold it back. On this step, make sure that you definitely take a look at the manual in order to see these pictures here of the wrong way to do this. Make sure that you are not completely inverting the surround or creasing it, causing any damage. So this is where we use the electric screwdriver and I find that it helps to have an extension on the screwdriver. We're going to carefully use our two finger method here to fold the surround back and then we are going to back out the mounting screw. We'll repeat that process for a total of 12 different screws and then we can completely separate the subwoofer from the baffle. Now in order to install the W7, we of course first want to connect our speaker wires to the wire terminals. It's important to note that if your W7 does have dual voice coils, make sure that both voice coils are attached. If you plan on mounting the W7 on a vertical face, it's definitely a good idea to get an extra set of hands to help you out. But for illustrative purposes, we're just going to be mounting this back in the shipping carton. Now a quick pro tip for you guys, we can take the mounting baffle from the shipping carton and we can actually use this as a guide to pre-drill each of our mounting hole locations onto our subwoofer box. Taking the time to do that with a small drill bit makes the mounting process a lot more simple. Once we position the W7, we wanna use heavy screws like the ones that were supplied with the sub. Avoid the use of inferior hardware like drywall screws as that can lead to issues. Next, we're going to reattach the steel O-ring by simply placing it over the outside of the surround and pushing it down evenly. You should not push down on only one side first. Make sure the O-ring is fully seated against the surround all the way around the subwoofer. Next, we can reposition the clamp ring and we wanna make sure that the beveled edge is out or towards the top of the subwoofer. And we want to position the clamp ring seam where it's going to be least likely to be seen in the install. It doesn't necessarily have to be lined up with the logo on the subwoofer. It can be wherever you're not going to see it in the build. In this case, I'm gonna line it up with the logo, which is right here. And we're gonna carefully get it started by just simply pushing it on with our thumb. In order to get a tight fit on the seam here, it's important that as we reapply the clamp ring, we apply pressure incrementally as we go around the outside of the sub. Congratulations, I hope you're ready for some amazing bass because you just installed the W7. I recently made a full in-depth video exploring the design and features of the W7 over on my channel, Car Audio Fabrication. 
So if you'd like to see that full video, be sure to check out the link down in the video description. Down there, you'll also be able to find more helpful links for the W7 on the JL Audio website. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching.